Okay, screencast six, um, more multipliers, and I broke the screencast up because if you get too many multipliers, you just start going insane. The last one was about the spending multiplier, when anyone does spending, um, government, business, uh, consumers, net exports, anything. This one's about um, two other kinds of multipliers that both involve the government. Let's start off with the tax multiplier. Um, and this is, again, going to be a lot of calculations, so you should probably have a calculator out so you can follow through. Um, it's not that complicated, but it does require numbers and calculations. Uh, so let's say the government cuts taxes by $1,000. Let's say MPC is 0 0.75. That means that your spending is going to increase by $750, right? You're going to save the other $250. And that $750 goes through that multiplication process that we went through last time. Um, you're going to spend it at someone's store. They're going to take the money and spend it somewhere else, etc., etc. The tax change is different than if someone just spends $1,000. Like if the government had just walked into a store and spent $1,000, that whole $1,000 would have been subjected to that multiplication process. But when the government cuts your taxes, because you have some NPS here, 0.25, you don't spend all of your tax cut, right? You take a piece of it here, 250, you put it away under your mattress, and you only spend 750 of it. So a tax change is a little bit less powerful than just a straight out spending change. And as a result of that, it gets a different kind of multiplier. So again, we're going to be looking at changes in GDP, but this time we're going to use a tax multiplier anytime we see a change in taxes. So for example, if the government cuts taxes by $100 and we know that the tax multiplier is 4, um, we know that GDP would go up by $400. So there was a formula for the spending multiplier, and there's also a formula for the tax multiplier. And it's this, uh, negative MPC divided by MPS. So you might want to get out a calculator and try these out and see if you can figure them out. So let's say the government cuts taxes by $100, and let's say MPC is 0.8. How much is GDP going to go up? Here's the formula. See if you can figure it out. The tax multiplier is negative, right, MPC, which is 0.8 over MPS. Remember, MPC plus MPS always have to equal 1, so MPS has to be equal to 0.2. Times the change in taxes. Here, the change in taxes is negative, right, negative $100, so less, $100 less in taxes. The tax multiplier is going to be negative 4. You're going to multiply that by negative $100. GDP is going to go up by $400. Two negatives make a positive. Try this one. Government raises taxes by $500. Let's say MPC is 0 0.6. What happens to GDP? There's the formula. You might want to pause it and see if you can figure it out. Tax multiplier. Remember the negative sign. Change in taxes this time is positive $500. They're raising taxes by $500. A negative times a positive, GDP is going to go down by $750. Again, here's a kind of quirky one. If we want, if we know the change in GDP, but we're trying to figure out the initial change um, in taxes, let's say the government wants to raise GDP by $800 billion, and let's say they know that MPC is 0.8. What would they have to do with taxes to get GDP to go up by $800 billion? Here we're looking for the change in GDP, or solving for the change in GDP. 800 billion, we know the tax multiplier, the negative sign, MPC over MPS, times the change in taxes, that's what we're solving for. 800 billion equals negative 4 times the change in taxes. Negative 200 billion would be the change in taxes, that's how much they'd have to cut taxes if that's what the multiplier was to get GDP to change in that way. So this is cold coffee in a glass. All right, so the other kind of multiplier is called the balanced budget multiplier, and it's just this um, kind of offshoot of how spending and taxes work. And it falls under the very rare circumstance, and just for the interest of textbooks and AP exams mostly, of what happens when the government increases its spending and then increases its taxes in the same exact amount. 
So a funny thing happens when the government does that, when they decide to spend money and then raise taxes to cover that exact amount of spending. And here's the rule, this is what you need to know for the balanced budget multiplier. If the government spends any amount of money, X, let's say $100 billion, and raises taxes by that same amount, $100 billion, that's what's going to happen to GDP. GDP is going to go up by $100 billion, and it doesn't even matter what MPC is. So let's say that MPC is 0.75, and let's say the government spends $200 billion and then raises taxes by $200 billion. Let's look at the changes individually. That spending change is going to be the change in GDP equals the multiplier, here the spending multiplier, 1, minus, 1 over 1 minus MPC, times 200. GDP is going to go up by $800 billion as a result of that spending. As a result of that ta tax change, remember it gets that different multiplier, negative MPC over MPS, so you see the negative sign there. Taxes are going up by $200 billion, so tax multiplier times that $200 billion tax change is going to be, mean that GDP is going to drop by $600 billion. So the net effect of that, GDP is going up by $800 because of the spending. It's going down by $600 because of that tax hike. $800 minus $600, $200 billion. Or again, just look at the numbers. If you raise taxes and increase spending by equal amounts, GDP changes by that amount. So you could try it out, um, and this is what AP exam questions look like. Government decides to increase spending by $400 billion. It wants to balance its budget, right, because it's going to cover that spending by raising taxes by $400 billion. How much is GDP going to go up? Drum roll. You got it, right? Right, you got it? Yes, you got it. $400 billion. That's how the balance budget multiplier works. We didn't even have to know what MPC was. All right, so done with multipliers. One more screencast to go in this unit, and um, done with the unit. All right. Well, that was a waste of time. Jamie, school is never a waste of time. Since we have 15 minutes until recess, please put down your pencils and stare at the front of the room.